Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here to talk about some May releases. Um, <laughs> these would have been anticipated releases, except I've basically given up on staying on time, um, but the upside of that means that I get to talk about more books that I find out about um, that I probably wouldn't have heard of in time to uh, like preemptively talk about them. So that's what I'm telling myself, um, and thank you guys for the feedback on the last one that the way I was grouping the covers together was totally fine. That's a lot easier for me, so I'm really glad it works for you as well. So as always, I will link the playlist of other anticipated releases that I've done this year, and I'm also going to put all of the Goodreads links to these books in a pinned comment. Uh, so if you want to learn more about them and read more about them, um, just check those links because I I tend to have like specific things that draw me to a book and then I'll kind of pull out to talk about, um, but not so much like a detailed summary. And as always, this is a whole mix of genres, uh, age ranges, kinds of books, all of that, because um, that's what I read, and I'm very excited to talk about these. We have some really fantastic books that just came out, and let's just jump into it. Um, and actually, there's a couple of days that I might have to do two groups of covers because we have so many to talk about. Like on May 2nd, we have six books to talk about. Um, Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully. I'm so excited for this. It is set in the same community as Firekeeper's Daughter, but it's following a different character, and it's set, I think, more than 10 years later. Um, we do see some of the same characters from the previous book, but it is like a new story and a new main character, and I absolutely loved Firekeeper's Daughter. It was one of my favorite books last year. Um, I, yeah, just absolutely incredible, and I know that this one is about um, reclaiming ancestors' remains and other important spiritual and cultural um, like pieces or artifacts uh, from museums. I've heard incredible things about this one already, and I know I'm gonna love this one too. Um, also, Your Plantation Prom is Not Okay by Kelly McWilliams. This is a contemporary that I think pretty much you can, like pretty much it sums it up in the title. Um, it's about our main character who, I don't know if it's her school or if she just finds out about it. It might be her school, but they're having a, their prom like celebration or party um, at a former plantation, and it's about her like speaking up about that and saying like this is not okay. Um, I haven't read anything by Kelly McWilliams yet, but I have been wanting to. Um, there's a couple of her books that I'm really interested in, and this is one of them, and I think it's a really important topic as well. Unfortunately, there are still like lots of plantations that still do events, like plantation weddings are still a thing um, that some people do, so I think this sounds very topical. A Portrait in Shadow by Nicole Jarvis. Guys, <laughs> this is like a care book if I've ever heard one, and I really, really hope that it's as good as I hope it will be. Um, this is a an Artemisia Gentileschi retelling, or like a story inspired by her life, um, with a fantasy element. So y'all know I love Artemisia Gentileschi, and I'm really interested in books about her, nonfiction and fiction, and I'm really interested to see how this is combined with magic. I hope I enjoy it. The Thorns Remain by J.J.A. Harwood. Um, this one has a beautiful cover, by the way. I am so excited for this one. I feel like I haven't heard great things about it, but I'm trying not to not to hear too many detailed thoughts because I really want this to be good. Um, I think this is like a kind of atmospheric fair folk sort of story, and I think our main character, um, she's a young woman who I think it's brought along to this some kind of like dance or celebration, um, and then the fae show up and it gets a lot messier and a lot more dangerous. I think maybe one of them might get taken to the fae world and she has to go and rescue them, something like that. I don't know. I just, the, all the vibes sound like something I would really want to read. Charmed Life by Marty Dumas, another gorgeous cover, like the first book in the series. Um, this is the sequel to Wild Seed Witch, which I read, I think, last year when it came out, and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm really interested to see where our main character, like, goes and, like, how things have changed for her since um, becoming more confident in herself and in her powers, but obviously there's still, like, conflict. And I'm really interested to see some of the, like, friendships that she developed um, continue to grow. The last book on May 2nd is The Story of Art Without Men by Katie Hessel. This is a giant nonfiction book that I'm really happy I got during the Barnes & Noble pre-order sale um, because it is not only an adult nonfiction hardcover, which are already incredibly expensive, but it's like an art book or it includes a lot of art reproductions, um, which makes it extra expensive. So if y'all are interested in this one and you end up with like a Barnes & Noble coupon or something, I would save it to use on this. But yeah, so this is a nonfiction book that traces like art history. I don't know if it's specifically Western art history um, or if it's more global, um, but it traces it through women's work and women's art rather than men's because um, apparently, like I'm not like an art history major or anything, so there's like a really famous well-known text called The Story of Art um, and it's, it's still used as like a staple in different art programs and it's basically all men. I think there's like two female artists maybe that the author talks about and um, 
Katie Hessel has, like, I heard her talking in, like, an interview, said that, that, that it is a very good book and she would still recommend it, but that it's missing so much. And so this is kind of, like, the companion to that. Um, so it's all, I believe, female artists. And um, I think... I think one of the questions the interviewer asked her was like, well, what would you say to people who say, what about the story of art with men? And she said, that's just the story of art, <laughs> which I think is a great reply because it is so true, not just with the book, but with the kinds of art that tend to get, get the kind of like respect and attention and um, like adulation, you know, it tends to be a very particular kind of artist. On May 9th, there are three books. God Breathed by Zach Hunt. This is another nonfiction, and this is about, I forget what the subtitle is exactly, but it's basically about, um, you know what, I'm just gonna look up the subtitle because I think it does a good job of summing up the book. Zach Hunt is another nonfiction book that I'm really excited to read. It's called Unraptured, and that is um, my friend Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly actually gifted that to me recently, um, so I'm very excited to read both of these. Okay, so the full title is God Breathed, What It Really Means for the Bible to be Divinely Inspired. Um, and as I said, this is by Zach Hunt. Um, sorry, I was reading it off my computer there. And this is a nonfiction book about, like, not treating the Bible literally, how, like, that's not what it is or what it's supposed to be, and that's not where its value is, which is something that I also feel strongly about and believe. And so I'm really looking forward to reading a book that goes more in depth on that um, and that talks about that. So I am very excited for that one. Beauty Reborn by Elizabeth Loam. This is one that I actually have already read and I have a whole um, review on, a spoiler-free review. I will link that below because I did get an arc. Um, and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that deals specifically with um, sexual assault. And it's very short, but I feel like the author did a really good job of handling these topics very thoughtfully and with a lot of nuance and care, even in such a short book. Um, I actually, I really loved it. I was very, very impressed by it. Um, I think that thematically it does a lot really well. I thought the character development was good. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's really a, an excellent book. And if it's, if the content is something that you're okay reading, I would definitely recommend that one. And Scarlet by Genevieve Cogman. This is a retelling, like a historical paranormal fantasy sort of book um, set around the time of the French Revolution, but with vampires. <laughs> and I just think that sounds incredibly interesting. I should mention, I think it is actually a Scarlet Pimpernel retelling, which would make sense with the, with the title. On May 16th, I have five books. One of them is another one that I've actually read and reviewed, so I will link that. Um, the Late Mrs. Willoughby by Claudia Gray. This is the sequel to The Murder of Mr. Wickham, which I really, really enjoyed. I'm so happy this is becoming a series. Um, this is a series of like murder mysteries that involve uh, a bunch of Jane Austen characters, and I have personally been really enjoying them. I know that some people haven't been liking them as much. Um, as somebody who is not like a mystery thriller reader, like that's not what I go to these books for. Like I go to them for the character work, for the interest of like seeing Jane Austen characters in these murder mysteries and that kind of thing. So if that's something you're looking for, I've been really enjoying them. Ruby Ramos's Recipe for Success by Jessica Parra. Um, this is one that I think I heard about from Utopia State of Mind, I think. Um, and this is a contemporary romance that involves like baking or cooking. So I think that sounds really great. Um, and the other things that, um, that Lily said about it also just made me really interested in it. Um, Venom and Vow by Anna Marie McLemore and Elliot McLemore. Y'all know Anna Marie McLemore is one of my absolute favorite authors and this is um, a fantasy novel. I think their first like high fantasy like set in a secondary world that they're writing with their husband um, and I have heard not great things about this one but I'm still really excited because I love Anna Marie McLemore and I feel like even if it's not my favorite of their books, I'm hoping I still have a good time with it. Painted Devils by Margaret Owen. This is a sequel to um, Little Thieves, which was one of my favorite books of the year when I read it, and I am so excited and nervous for this one. Um, yeah, I, I love the character work and the world building and the relationships. Like, I'm very excited for the sequel, but also stressed, because <laughs> um, that's what it's like reading book series, like fantasy book series a lot of times. But um, yeah, definitely looking forward to that one. And Court of the Undying Seasons by A.M. Strickland. This is another one that I have not heard great things about, so I'm hoping that I'm the outlier. Um, but this is a vampire novel. That's really all I know about it. Um, I've only read one book by Am Strickland, but I do want to read others. Um, and actually, I won a copy of this one in a giveaway, so I'm very excited to be getting to this soon. May 23rd, I have three books to talk about. The Luis Ortega Survival Club by Sonora Reyes. I think this is the author of The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School, which I have not read, um, but this one also looks very interesting, and I think I saw it pitched as kind of like John Tucker Must Die, 
um, except that, I don't know if it's, like, domestic violence or, um, like, sexual assault. Heroes of the Water Monster by Brian Young. I actually just heard about this sequel recently. It's a sequel to, um, what was the first book called? Healer of the Water Monster. I just saw the spine over there, um, which I really, really loved, and, um, it deals with Navajo, um, stories and, like, cultural beliefs and practices in a very respectful way, um, that is not, like, like, the author is Navajo or Dine himself, and so he's not, like, framing it as, like, fun myths and stories for people to read, you know? Um, like, there there are lots of fun elements, but it's also told in a way that is, like, respectful of this being, like, people's current practices, you know? Um, and also I think it has a lot of great themes about relationships and healing and grief and taking care of other living beings, so I definitely think the sequel is going to be really interesting, and I know it also involves our main character's stepbrother, which I think is going to be also very interesting. And then Magic Has No Borders, edited by Sona Charapotra and Samira Ahmed. From Trudeaus and Perrys to Jinn and Goddesses, this lush collection of South Asian folklore, legends, and epics reimagines stories of old for a modern audience. Um, yeah, I just think that sounds fantastic. And then finally, on May 30th, I have three books to talk about. The Benevolent Society of Ill-Mannered Ladies by Alison Goodman. I have been so excited about this since I found out. Um, Alison Goodman wrote the Dark Days Club series, which is one of my favorite series, and I was so excited to see her doing another historical. Um, I don't think this one has any fantasy elements, but I love the way that she writes historical books and the way that she writes female characters and just characters and relationships in general. I can't wait for this one. A high society amateur detective at the heart of Regency London uses her wits and invisible ability as an old maid to protect other women in a new and fiercely feminist historical mystery series from New York Times bestselling author Alison Goodman. Need I say more? I think that sounds great. <laughs> um, when the Vibe is Right by Sarah Das. I absolutely loved Where the Rhythm Takes You. Um, I, I say this every time, but it is the only persuasion retelling that I acknowledge <laughs> um, that I have actually enjoyed, and I just thought this was fantastic, um, her previous novel, and so I'm so excited that she has another book coming out, or that already came out, and I don't remember I don't think I remember anything about the premise, so please look into it if you're interested, but I didn't really need to know what it was about. Um, and then the last book I'm going to talk about is Threads That Bind by Kika Hatsopulu. This book is inspired by um, the mythology, the Greek mythology around the Three Fates. Um, our main character is like a descendant or kind of a representative of the Three Fates, and she ends up having to, I don't know, do some kind of like quest or rescue someone or adventure, and the person that she needs help from is somebody who she's like bound to by like this kind of like, soulmate thread or something. I don't know. This just looked really interesting. I also think it's cool that we have a Greek author who is writing a Greek retelling. Um, I know there's been some discussion about that lately. And I just think it's, it sounds like a really cool, um, like, perspective to take on these stories because, like, the fates is not really something that we get a lot of retellings of. Now, I am not a fan of soulmate stories. That's not a trope I enjoy at all, but because of the way that this one is written and the specific way it's connected to the mythology, I feel like I might still like this one. So I'm looking forward to trying it. And those are all of the books for May. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna like accept the fact that these are going to be like new releases, not anticipated <laughs> releases, because um, that's just that's just how it's going. So let me know if you are also excited about any of these. Let me know if you have a book that came out recently or is coming out soon that you're excited about. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!